Now, folks, I'm about to say something that'll go down like a bag of sick with the Twitterati. It might not be popular, it might even be boring in some quarters, but I think it needs to be said. This is my ode to oil. The oil and gas industry in Britain is one of our, most na our nation's most important, if you ask me. It supplies energy to power enterprise. It heats our homes. It makes sure that you can get to work. It allows aeroplanes to transport our everyday goods and, of course, people to and from our nation. If you're holding your tele remote right now, its plastic is oil. The fertiliser used to produce the food you eat is oil. The detergent you're using to do your washing is oil. The paint you've just used to do up the house is oil. The potentially life-saving medicine you're taking each day is oil. That's why it's absolutely baffling to me that hardly anybody seems to be criticising the Extinction Rebellion love child Just Stop Oil on what they're doing and what they're actually calling for. The extreme green activists clashed with lorry drivers yesterday as protesters blocked oil terminals and hauled themselves on top of tankers in planned Easter demonstrations to thwart oil transportation. Now, folks, a driver in Essex was pictured yanking one of them from his vehicle. Someone just trying to make a living, going about his day-to-day -day life. And given how vital oil is, especially during a severe cost-of-living crisis, I can understand this bloke's frustration. It's also common sense to suggest it's not safe to have randoms treating an oil tanker like it's a kid's Ch climbing frame. And I certainly write, I don't condone physical violence, but this driver may well have prevented any, some form of disaster here. Who knows, folks, right? You'll have to be Mystic Meg. What I do know, though, and what you don't, I think, have to be a clairvoyant to understand, and what is utterly baffling, frankly, is how anyone can defend people who attack somebody like this man for actually seeking to counter and stop these activists that want to dismantle capitalism and the structures of the state. They're activists, right? They parrot lines on how we're looking at the end of life on earth. Well, I'm sorry, but ask yourself this. Ask yourself, if you genuinely believed that the world was about to end in either a ball of flames or by drowning every single one of its inhabitants and that it was too late for humanity to act, would you really, would you honestly spend your final days gluing your behind to the middle of a road and ask yourself how they get away with it? Some are arrested time and again. Remember the scenes in the past during anti-lockdown protests, for example. The police always cleared them without a second thought. Woke causes get a free pass in modern Britain. And these people say, we just want to be listened to. They cry, that's their rallying cry, these British climate activists. And I say, listen to. Our energy bills are spiralling out of control, but our government hasn't wavered from its net zero zealotry. If anything, they need to be listened to a lot less to protect British pay packets in a country, let's not forget, that emits less than 1% of global CO2 emissions. In what way can you honestly argue that these people have been ignored? I agree with the former Brexit Secretary, Lord Frost, who said that the government is on a plan where it's not engaging with the trade-offs. It won't be possible, he says, to deliver net zero on the timetable they want, and we will end up with rationing and behavioural change. Pretty damning, if you ask me. And that's the oil-free future that I think these activists actually want. And I, folks, I for one, until there's an alternative, hope to almighty God that they fail.